Section A5 of ISO 27001 is on organisation of information security and it has two subsections. One is about setting up the roles and responsibilities of information security in your organisation and the second subsection deals with external parties. And what I'll do is just briefly speak about each of those. The first section is really about setting out the roles and the responsibilities for information security. Who does what in your organisation when it comes to information security? It also deals with things like uh, dealing with, for example, the regulatory authorities or special interest groups. In other words, how do you keep up to date and do you go to things like conferences or do you have consultants or do you have specialists in-house whose job it is to keep on top of information security? It also has uh, clauses related to things like confidentiality agreements and the important element there is to make sure that confidentiality agreements are not just signed by your own employees but are also signed by third parties such as subcontractors or potentially even your clients. The second subsection is to deal with external organisations and this is a very important part of ISO 27001. We've already talked before about the concept of scope and this, these three clauses under the second section of A5 deal with your relationship with anybody outside of that scope. So in other words, it, ex it requires you to put in controls or it asks you to consider the risks of how you're going to deal with third parties, how you're going to give them information or allow them access to your information. And those third parties could be, for example, your suppliers, your contractors, or it could be as general as anybody who has access to your premises, for example, in your organization. However, it also specifically addresses the requirements around your clients. And quite often, organizations will allow their clients access to their IT systems or to their own information, or will share information with them. And again, that, be, that can be quite tricky and raise potential risks. So ISO 27001 has a specific clause here to require you to look at how you wish to manage that in an appropriate way. Now, the one tip I would have for anybody looking at this section is to go to ISO 27002. Because ISO 27002 was updated in 2005 and a huge amount of extra information and advice was given in 27002 on how to deal with this area. And specifically, there's a lot of advice and guidance on how to write SLAs and contracts for your third parties to ensure that your information assets are protected. Well, um, anybody involved in the ISMS should have defined specific roles. At a minimum, there should be a designated ISMS manager. The degree to which this is deployed is dependent upon the size of the organisation. So in a larger organisation, it would be advisable to have management, or, sorry, information security responsibilities at various levels in the organisation and in various areas of the organisation. In a smaller organisation, you find sometimes there's maybe only one person or maybe a couple of people who would have that responsibility. But the, the fundamental thing is that you know, there should be somebody that is one individual that's designated as the ISMS manager. Thank you.